Hey everybody, I'm Suzanne Barrett Justice, and today's video, we're going to paint an ocelot. Now an ocelot is a spotted feline species that lives primarily in Central and South America, uh, but we do have them here in, the, in North America as well, and more of the Southwest uh, regions of the United States and in Mexico. So yeah, we're gonna have fun with this little cat. And uh, so hold on, stay with me, and we're going to go ahead and jump in on this piece. If you are my subscribers, thanks so much. And if you're not, please consider subscribing. It's not hard. Just go ahead and hit this little owl down here and ring the bell for notifications. So you'll know when the next fun filled art tutorial is going to come out. Okay, so hold tight. Let's go ahead and jump right into this little ocelot. All right, we are starting off on a, it's a 12 by 12 super smooth gessoed panel. And I'm just doing a wash. You can see, and you can, you're can you getting a feeling of how slick the surface is. It's super slick, which I am, which helps me doing um, a wipeout like I'm doing now. So I'm, I'm sketching, if you will, the ocelot onto the substrate, but then I'm wiping the paint off. So I am concentrating mainly on the negative space forgive me singer is looking for another treat out of the uh, pantry here at the studio anyhow so you can see i'm kind of putting this cat in the cat is coming or descending down a tree or a log or something and so i am just trying to make this cat look kind of slinky <laughs> <laughs> as cats are known to be and you can see i'm just zeroing in on the negative space and uh, so I'm just kind of lightly sketching. I'm using a rosemary round uh, ivory. It's actually a pretty big brush. I'm just using it for the point. Again, no detail. We're just getting it um, kind of sketched in. That's what's going on here. little ocelot colors we're starting I know this is a big mess but here's our palette to start with I've got the titanium white I got yellow ochre this is burnt sienna this is yellow lake this is the oops <laughs> that's the very wet snow yay natural tint this is ivory black and that is Van Dyke Brown. Now, I will be adding other colors, but that's what I'm gonna start. Eh, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit, I, you know what, I'm not even, I'm not gonna put a little bit of blue down. I'm gonna challenge myself, because I almost always have some blue right away, but I'm gonna start with this palette, and we'll start to block in the ocelot. Now to start blocking in, uh, I am also using one of the uh, Rosemary rounds again and I'm just kind of looking for the dark values suggesting where the spots and stripes are going to be but know that even at this point I'm still not really committed even with the amount of paint that I'm putting down I will be able to wipe off and change and move that's one of the advantages of working on these super slick substrates it's if you're working all la prima you can take some of this paint off very you know even tomorrow I could so here we are. I'm kind of putting in the background. I'm using a very dark, cool green. It's a combination of um, phthalo green, sap green, and Prussian blue. And with just a little tad of brown thrown in there just to make it a little, a little bit more earthy. And one of the frustrating things about working on this type of substrate, uh, because it's so slick, um, you do see such a, a reflection here and 
I apologize for that. It's really hard for me not to have that reflective light um, on the substrate, but just kind of blocking it in. I am using a very large filbert. It's an Eclipse filbert by Rosemary. Great for doing application as well as blending. But even with me blending with this particular brush, I will go back with a, a um, really soft, soft brush, which is generally my 279 series, which is a um, natural hair. It's a mongoose, I believe. And it helps me get some of these brush areas out. Now, what I'm using here is just the paint scraper, and I'm taking off paint and suggesting some foliage. Now, a lot of my references come from zoos, and of course in zoos they want you to see the animals. Even if this animal happens to have a more solitary um, type of personality, I, I choose to put foliage in just to give it a sense of protection. I don't like animals to feel vulnerable. And here I'm actually making more corrections with it, taking more paint off, and that's the beautiful thing. I can go back in on the other side, work the background in a little bit, uh, raise that ear up, sketch it in a little bit more. Um, paint scrapers are awesome, folks. If you don't have a paint scraper, get one. Now, I'm trying to smooth out the background just a little bit to try to take some of the actual brush strokes out. I want the background to be very you know, blurry and subdued. I'm not wanting it real impasto. I don't want thick paint back there and I want to smooth it out as much as possible. So I don't know what I was doing there. I think I was being frustrated. <laughs> but um, anyhow, because the arms are in the background, again, it's kind of a dark background and I want the sharpest focus to be in the face. So I'm putting these arms in and you can see I'm creating, I want that soft edge. So I have to paint wet on wet here. I need that wet background to blend that edge. And when I'm doing this, I am barely breathing, folks. I am keeping a super, super light, light hand when I'm doing the application so that I can blend that edge. I want a soft edge. Having that slightly blurry creates the sense of depth. And that's what I'm trying to achieve here. Now, I'm still not really detailed yet, but I am dying to put those whiskers in. So, hence our paint scraper. Paint scrapers are a wonderful tool. I'm taking paint off and trying to get some whiskers in. You know, these animals depend on the whiskers since they're primarily nocturnal. You know, they do most of their hunting at dusk or at dawn. So the, they like the low light and those whiskers sure do come in handy to help them get around and feel their environment just a little bit more. So yeah, I, I do love paint scrapers, I gotta tell you. Fun, 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 fun. And sometimes it's hard to know when to stop <laughs> with a paint scraper because it's just that much fun. Okay, I'm putting in more and more detail, and I'm trying to get these eyes. They're not actually even, and I'm still, you know, and I don't have enough of the black liner, if you will, around the eyes yet. So I'm still moving stuff around. One thing always holds true. If you look on the lower part of the iris, it's always lighter than the, do the top part of the iris, mainly because of that eyebrow. It's, you know, it's, it's shadowing. It's shading that eye. So... That's pretty much true with all species. I don't know, humans, dogs, cats, elephants, whatever. They, because of where the light source generally comes from, you're going to have a lighter area on the bottom of any iris. So, and I've got to get the spots in. And, and each ocelot has a different pattern of spots, which is wonderful for IDing them in a field, or perhaps they use those spots to ID each other too. They're all unique. Now again, more spots, more spots, more spots. Yes, there's spots everywhere. 
Now, all right, I'm going in with a number four rosemary pointed um, round eclipse. And, all right, forgive me for the shaking. I just got this new thing to hold my phone, and it's a little wiggly. But I wanted to show you in real time. I am I'm adding a little bit of a eh, kind of a greeny, turquoisey gray, if you will, to the eye, just to give it a little bit more... Um, life and make it a little bit more interesting but still I will um, lighten the bottom part of the iris always now again here's this real fun reflective uh, wet paint and I will work on that I know as long as I shadow it with my body I seem to be able to kind of zone in and you'll notice that I'm not putting a lot of paint down and it's because I have to really look. I'll take a step back, look, take a step back, look. There's nothing wrong with that. You've got to know what your, you know, where your paint's going and be very deliberate with your paint application. So you see here, I'm, I'm, I am making it very light at the, um, this part of the iris is very light. And after I, I'm comfortable with the actual iris, I will go in and do the pupil. But I'll let you watch here for a second. It's just me doing real time painting these eyes because I think that's the fun part, right? We all enjoy the eyes of any animal that we're painting. Now I will say, yes, I am using ivory black in the pupil, but oftentimes I'll use a little bit of brown. In this case, it's Van Dyke brown. As the, poop, as the pupil is uh, the edges of the pupil often look a little bit blurry so I want it to be pinpointed in the center so that's what I'm doing here I'm kind of uh, softening that pupil edge and I'm using a little Van Dyke Breen brown into that paint the wet paint of the pu of the actual iris now I'm going in here with straight ivory black and that's what helps give that pupil that sharp look. But you gotta have that fuzzy edge to get that sharp look, right? So that's what I'm doing here. One of my favorite things to do is add the light in the eye where the reflect, you know, where there's the reflection of the surrounding light. And uh, yeah, it's almost never white for me. In this case, it's just a light turquoisey green. It's almost, you almost can't tell. But if you look at the tip of the brush, you can see that it's not white. And oftentimes, remember folks, that is reflected light. So whatever is around that eye is probably the color that will be reflected in the eye itself. So here I'm just kind of getting the you know upper edge of the pupil. Again, it's always darker than the lower edge of the, uh, not the pupil, but the iris. And basically the same thing is gonna be done on this side. And I will get to the light too. So I'll let you watch.
and I love putting the light in. So here I go. I'm just putting more, more brightness in the eye. I just think that really makes the eyes come to life when you get to put the reflective light like this. And again, it's not white. It is a really light turquoisey green.
So I'm putting in more and more of the light around um, the cat's face. So I'm looking for any detail that I can put in. And, you know, I've got the spots. I still have all the light or white areas around the eyes. So all of it has to go in and I'm, I'm moving around, moving around this piece. Remember folks, if you're seeing anything that you're, you know, you're, you're trying to you know, question about well, what is she doing there? What is this? What did you do? Please leave a, any questions you may have or comments in the comment section below. And I promise you, I get to you. I usually get to everybody pretty fast. Um, so I will be glad to answer any questions that you have about today's video or any of my videos for that matter. But uh, yeah, just leave it in the comment section. Now, I think what's interesting about an ocelot, I think their noses are big for their face. I don't know. I just think they're kind of cute. So I do want to make sure that I get this nose leather correct. So I've already made it bigger than what I originally started with. And I'm just kind of looking at the distance from one area to the next. And you'll see that I actually bring this muzzle out a little bit more off to the sides. It becomes broader as I work, work my way through this piece. You know, I'm always, always, you know, tweaking here and there. I'm getting close uh, to finishing up this cat's face. I can tell. 
um, I am still going just in a little bit real time just to show you how and sometimes I'm just dotting in little bits of color here and there and I move around the piece so you know I know that there's a whole lot more done on the left side of the cat's face and on the right side of the cat's face or I should say the right side of the painting on the cat's face um, so and again I have to keep that soft edge where the the cat's head is blending into the background so I'm keeping all I'm being mindful about all these things when I'm doing this paint Okay, and I get to add the little fun highlights onto this sweet little ocelot's nose. I like that kind of stuff. This is where I feel like, you know, I know I'm almost, I'm getting closer to the end. I'm, I'm getting, you know, I'm, I'm having fun with it when I get to do this. Now, I've already made the, this muzzle a little bit bigger. So now I've brought the chin down. I've got to put the dark values underneath the, uh, the um, I guess you would say where his mouth would actually open, that part above the chin and more dark spots lots and lots of spots <laughs> but that's what makes this kind of stuff so much fun there's that smile I had to get that part in <laughs> and so I've made the jaw a little bit different again see I keep moving through a painting I morph with anything uh, you know there's a lot of artists that do perfect dead-on right away sketches some artists actually use projectors or tracing paper they have a very well planned out piece. I tend to not be that girl. <laughs> I tend to just jump into a painting and that's why oftentimes I'm morphing through the whole painting. I don't know, it just makes it very organic for me. And uh, yeah, so now I'm uh, jumping onto the other side of the cat's face, getting that in there, everything's coming together, feeling pretty good, yep. Now, the dark that I'm using, the black that I'm using, it's almost always ivory black, folks. I, um, I love ivory black. And here comes the fun leaves. And again, and these colors that I'm using here, I, I did put some turquoise into it. So it is the thallow green. I have, um, I have a little bit of cadmium green. And um, what else have I got there? Oh, sap green. And so it's a combination of those colors, but I want them to overlap. So where they're overlapping, I'm gonna put you know, darker uh, colors in there, even Prussian blues in that. I had the Prussian blue that, if you'll remember, I put into the background. So I'm creating shadows, and then where I get to do the highlights on the leaves are fun for me too, because that's where I use turquoise and white, or even king's blue. You can see the turquoise is up at the top of the palette, next to my king's blue at the very tippy top. Just a little bit here and there. You know, I'm moving all around my palette, and I'm moving all around my painting. But I'm getting close. You know if I'm putting in the uh, foliage, we're almost done.
uh, the fun highlights on the foliage and I like to use the blues the shiny blues which I'm using King's Blue to create that shine and, um, and I'll even put a little white on those little pieces just to make it look like it's wet you know he's this my cat's in a jungle <laughs> so I am making it look that way remember these cats have a very wide um, territory and they can live in a lot of different conditions now I'm, I'm getting ready to go in with the sword because you know I did the whiskers but I'm doing more whiskers with the sword brush and uh, here you have it I am pretty pleased with how this cat turned out I, I laid it down on a flat surface hoping that it would be less shiny so you can actually see so there we go I am pretty pleased with how this cat turned out I like the ocelot and uh, yeah and there you have it and this is what he might look like if he was framed I hope you enjoyed today's video. Ta-da! Here it is. Uh, I had fun. I really did have fun. This was somewhat of an a la prima piece for me in that I am painting on a, you know, a gessoed masonite panel. So it is, it's kind of slickery, you know, um, but I was trying desperately to get the whiskers in by cutting using the cutting tool, but I actually went in and ended up using my sword brush anyway and painting some in. But yeah, this was really fun. Um, oftentimes my photo references are coming from zoos. So there are animals that are meant to be seen and in the open. So I'll oftentimes add foliage or something like this just to make them feel a little bit more protected. So yeah, here it is. And I really did have fun and I hope you had fun as well. So, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up because I could really use that. And if you are my subscribers, thanks so much. And if you're not, go ahead and subscribe. Just hit that little owl right there and ring the bell for a notification when the next video comes out and you'll know, okay? So from Kingsport, Tennessee, I wanna thank you so much and I'll see you next time, bye.